Hello guys, today we are going to uh, do something different. Um, since I discovered through Tonve's channel that we have um, a new index um, for the complete price of Bitcoin since the beginning, um, that updates the price at every second, so it's always updating in real time. So I decided to change the index I'm using for my price to time model. And since I have to change the index, then it makes sense to show uh, to you guys how I build the model. And this way I'm going to um, start with a clean chart, new index, updated in real time, and I'm going to draw the complete model from start to finish so that you guys can see uh, how I how I do it, what are the rules, and what price is going to come up in the end. So basically, let's go to the screen share. Okay, so now you you see here the complete completely clean chart. This is the new index, by the way. Uh, let me just show to you what index I'm talking about. So if you go to trading view, then you choose BTC and you select index here in this box. And you will see the index I'm using is this one. BTC USD made by trading view. Okay. So clean chart. No indicators, nothing, just the price starting from around 2010 uh, to the current real time here price, which is now 50,800 ish dollars. Okay, so first steps is to draw the halvenings. And I have a, a list here just to help me because I already have all the dates, all the prices, everything. So uh, this does not become a very long video. So the first halvening happened on the 28th of November, 2012. So as this is a weekly chart, you can see here, so this index, I'm using the weekly chart. Um, Maybe the exact day of the halvening is not going to show up on the chart, so you have to select in which week uh, this happened. And it is the week of the 26th November. So what you have to do is you come here, you choose vertical line, and then you choose the week that corresponds to the 28th of November. 2012. Uh -huh. Okay, here it is. It's the 26th of November week of 2012. So you put your vertical line there, and this is your first halvening on this chart. Then you choose again a vertical line, and you go to the second halvening, which happened on the 9th of July, 2016. So you have to select the 4th of July, 2016 week. And here you go. You have your second halvening. And then let's have our last Halvening, which happened on the 11th of May, 2020. Well, this is exactly the same start of week. So 11th May, 2020. And here is your third halvening. Okay. So as you know, one of the rules for this model, the price to time model, um, is how many candles do you have from the halvening to the next top and then for the second square 
you have to use exactly the same number of candles. Sorry. So basically, you find the number of candles since the previous bottom to the halvening. And you can do this by using this, uh, this tool here, the date range on TradingView. And basically, you mark here, which is the previous bottom before the halvening, this halvening of 2012. And you have a count of 54 candles. Okay. So what you do now is you go to the square tool and you start your first corner of the square uh, from the lowest point of the candle, the lowest price. So it's not the close, it's the lowest price of the candle. Here, and then you stretch the square to the halvening and you will have to adjust this using the coordinates, but the price should, uh, the top side of the square should match exactly the highest price of the halvening weekly candle. So, sorry. So basically you can put your square here just close it for now here, exactly on top of the halvening. Then you check what is the highest price of that candle. And as you can see on the top left corner, this is 12.69. So what you do is you come here to the square, you open the uh, settings of the square, and then you change here this price to 12.69. By the way, let's just confirm that this candle here, the lowest price of this candle is 199 exactly. Okay, so this is correct. 199. Just one last confirmation. If you subtract uh, 133 from 187, you get the 54 candles that match the length here of this rectangle. So this rectangle is done. Now, if you create another rectangle, you have to start exactly on that same corner. I'll, I'll just start drawing it here first. And then you will extend this triangle to the top of that candle. And now we are going to adjust the coordinates with the exact prices and the exact uh, length of the rectangle here on, a date, uh, on the date axis. So we had 54. So let's start by the corner, the, the lower left corner of this uh, rectangle. And this is 1268. So let me go to the coordinates here. 1268. And then the top price is already set. Let's confirm that this is the top price for that candle, 1242 exactly. So this one is good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now you just have to adjust the length of this rectangle here from the halvening to this side. It has to match 54 candles. So let's measure again from here. Okay, 54, that means we need two more and that's it okay so you have the first two rectangles of the 
price to time model. So one of the advantages of, of the price to time model is that not only this model can give you the top price for the current bull run, but also an approximate date for when that uh, top price will occur. And, and this is based on the pattern that you see here. If you count the number of candles from the previous bottom to the halvening, which in this case here on the left for the first halvening is 54 candles. And if you match those 54 candles to the right side of the halvening, when you draw your rectangle, you will see that it matches precisely the point where you got the first top after the first halvening. So if you make this construction again for the second halvening, you get your lowest price before that halvening here. So we are going to start drawing this rectangle from the lowest point, which is 162. And to the highest point, to the highest price of the candle that exactly matches the halvening, which is the highest is 682.67. 682.67. Yeah, now let's go to the coordinates. Okay, so the price is 682.67. 682.67. And that's it. So now you can just duplicate this rectangle to match exactly the same number of candles to the other side. Two seventy four. One sixty two, one sixty six. Actually, let me just confirm something. This new index gives me a different bottom for this one here. Hmm, that's interesting. So, basically, on the previous index I was using, which is the BLX the lowest point before the second halving was here on the 12th of January week and the new index is giving me this candle here as the lowest one before that index which is inaccurate so i'm just i'm just going to use the same weekly candle for the lowest price from the BLX which i believe the price is more accurate so this will be the 12th of January, uh -huh. 12th of January with the price 163 here. And I'm going to change it to the new one. So we are just going to use this candle and not that candle. Because that wick is actually not correct. This must have been some kind of glitch in one of the exchanges and, and this index when TradingView um, made this index, um, this glitch may have extended this week a, a little more than it should because the lowest price before the second halvening was exactly on this week, the week of the 12th of January 2015 and the lowest price was 16645. So 16645, this is correct, and 682 for the top right corner, one six, so the highest is 68267. Okay, correct. So this rectangle is drawn, so now you just have to duplicate this rectangle here and now adjust it. So this halvening here. Now we just need the price again to confirm the lower left corner, which is 68267. 
682.67. There you go, exactly matching the same corner of the other rectangle. And now you extend this rectangle to match the top price, which is 1980425 and there you go so now you have the two rectangles uh, for the first and second uh, halvenings are drawn and now we have to do the same for the last halvening and you will just understand a bit why this will give you the top price and an estimated date for that top price so what I'm doing now is just reduce a bit the scale the price scale here because this will not fit Okay, let me just confirm the lowest price has been on the previous model that was drawn. This was on the the week of the 10th of December 2018. Here it is, this one matches. So this is the lowest price. And the lowest price is exactly 3124.51. Okay, so let's start a new rectangle from that low to the halving. Now, confirming the price is exactly on that corner, so. The lowest is uh, 3124, 3124, 51. Exactly. And now we have to insert the coordinates for the top right corner, which is a high of 9946.57. 9946.57. If I'm not mistaken, exactly. So this one is done, and now you duplicate this one. Okay, and it's easier if you just come here, you copy this price then seconds 11 four okay so it's this one i have to change so this is your lower left corner and we will just put something here for now and then we'll change it later and you will see how and okay so this is the start of this rectangle now i have to move this here and re reduce a bit the size so that you can see the complete model Okay, now, so what we are looking for now, so we have already, we have already an approximate date for the next stop, and you can see this is around the first week of October, because we are using the same number of candles for the length of the rect rectangle, so we use the same for the first halvening, first number, exactly the same number of candles from this one then we use the same number of candles here then we use the same number of candles between the length of the two rectangles here on the second and 
the second halvening and then we use this exactly same number of candles or rectangle length on the third halvening between these two so now we want to find where the top price will be around the first week of October 2021 so what you have to do is align and now you are going to put this line here on the highest price and then you go here so you I'll have to just move this a bit I'm also changing the color of this line already so I can put it exactly as the previous model so now we have orange opacity we can use this and make it a dashed line which is easier to understand here in this context and now you just cross this line here just touching you see it has to touch exactly the top price of the second uh, the, the second top after the second halving okay so it's about there now that you have an approximate price for the next top you just have to extend your rectangle to cross that dashed line and let's see it seems accurate so let's confirm 280 so I guess this uh, the index I, I was using before has a more accurate price which gives me a price of 280 approximately $280,000 for the next top and this new index it seems to maybe I'm not crossing exactly on the highest price of the second yeah so I hope I hope you can see the screen you can see all the lines I'm drawing here because the I'm I'm al I'm already using zoom the zoom feature of the browser because people complained that it was hard to read some some words but let's try to make it more accurate Okay it seems more accurate now so I can just move this a bit more okay it seem, yeah it seems that it's crossing exactly on the point that it should which gives us well this is close enough the other one was showing 282,900 ish something dollars and this one is now showing 281 800 ish dollars so you know the only difference of the price is minimal if you consider this is a logarithmic chart and the difference of the final price is uh, minimal considering that the index I'm using is different from the previous one so this is accurate enough for me so actually it gives me 280k for the next stop which is uh, basically the same as the previous one so now that we have almost everything drawn here I'm going to move the chart a bit so you can see the complete model still a bit more more 
I cannot use the auto feature of this chart because it will get out of the visible okay I think you can see everything yep okay so most steps are done basically what happens here is the pattern is you have the same number of candles for both rectangles of each halvening and that gives you the approximate date for the top the two previous tops are already confirmed so you are going to use those two tops to have this dashed line crossing the first and the second which were confirmed already and then giving you an estimated top price for the pattern that defined the date which is the first week of October and this gives us an approximate price of $280,000 for Bitcoin by the first week of October 2021. So to finalize the model, which is an improvement, I also uh, just later after the first release of this model, I just decided to have this improvement. What I'm going to do is the exponential curve that defines the, you know, the maximum uh, price that Bitcoin should have inside those rectangles so that after the halving, when you have the bull run, if you cross the exponential uh, curved line, basically that tells you that the price is going up too high, too fast, and it may, you know, uh, because of that, a big correction may occur depending on how much you cross that exponential curved line. So for that, you need three points for each halvening. So you choose your curve line here, and then you start drawing the curve line here using the lower left uh, corner of the first rectangle. Then you end your line exactly on the top right corner of the second rectangle. I'm this magnet thing sometimes it just doesn't want to be on the exact place where it should okay and now you drag the middle point to the exact cross made by the two rectangles here on top of the halvening so this is your exponential curve that should define the maximum price that the bull run should have in a sustainable way and as you can see when the price crossed the exponential curved line here on the second rectangle of the first halvening a big correction occurred this was a 75 percent correction so now you do the same thing for the second halvening to this corner And now you drag the middle point to the exact point where the rectangles cross or touch the corners here. Okay. And this gives you, uh, again, the exponential curve that the price should not cross if it, wants, if it wants to be healthy and sustainable. So you see the first big difference between the first halvening and the second halvening is that during the second the price never crossed above the exponential uh, curve line and thus it never had the 75% correction before going to the top. So here that didn't happen. The price exponentially passed to uh, passed cross this line to the upside so much that it had this big correction of 75%. So let's see what's happening here for the current bull run. 
so let's start the curve line this is I have to do it I have to finish this quickly okay exactly on the corner now you drag the middle point to the crossing to the where the rectangles touch each other exactly here and there you go you have the model the price to time model complete so what does this tells you basically look as soon as the price crossed above the exponential curved line here that defines the middle basically the middle of this rectangle uh, as soon as the price crossed above that line you had a correction again the price crossed here above the, the line you had a correction and now the price is trying to cross again exactly during this the, the current week and it's already being rejected and you see this red line here this is the price line and it's now red because the price is being rejected exactly on top of the exponential curve line. So there you go. The one last thing um, that I should mention because the video is already very long, 30 minutes. And so what do I use just as a reference? Usually I also use the RSI. So here is the RSI with the default settings of 14 periods and I also use the 20 exponential moving average for this model. I usually use the uh, simple moving average for technical analysis but for this model I prefer to use the exponential moving average, the 20 period and the 200 period and just this final, just this final thing. Uh, if you notice, I use the 20 period uh, exponential moving average because for the first bull run after the first halvening and also for the second, when the price crossed below the exponential moving average, uh, the 20 period exponential moving average, this indicated that we started the bear market. So this is a good this is a good signal if you want to, after the top, if you want to see uh, exactly when we should consider that we enter the bear market, the price crosses below the 20 period exponential moving average. Why the 200? Uh, the 200 is used because also it gives you a very good uh, bottom for checking when the price goes down on the bear market where should it stop going down so i use the 200 for that as you can see it worked here after the first halvening during the bear market this was basically defined by the 200 period and here again close enough close enough the 200 period also defined the bottom for the second bear market and i hope we are going to see the same exact thing with the 200 period on the next bear market so that's it for today i hope you enjoyed the construction of the price to time model i hope you you find it useful um, let me just stop sharing my screen i hope you find it useful i hope you use it not only as a prediction tool for when the next stop will occur also what price could we expect and also to detect um, if the price crosses above the exponential curved line you may expect a correction depending on how much it passes over that line or not so if it is a if it crosses the line like vertically you may expect a big correction if it just goes above the line and then comes back you may expect like 15 to 20 percent corrections so this has been a very useful tool for me and i hope it's very useful to you okay okay guys uh see you all on the next one